you can't make money refurbishing electronics. Okay, so maybe can't is too strong of a word. I guess it is possible. It's just very, very difficult. I'll talk more about that in a minute, but we first need to ask, what does refurbished mean? Or more importantly, what is the expectation when someone is buying a refurbished device? And the next question we need to address is why do so many companies claim to refurbish devices, but don't actually do it? Unfortunately, to my knowledge, there is no official legal definition of refurbished, and I think that's inherently one of the main problems. To my knowledge, there's no standard that companies have to be held accountable to when they're selling refurbished devices. Now, as to what the expectation is from a customer when they're buying a refurbished device, that varies depending on the customer. My opinion is that a refurbished device should be taken apart, cleaned, repaired, and basically work exactly as it would from the factory. I would expect a refurbished device device to be in good physical condition, not perfect. I would expect maybe some scratches or smudges on the outer shell, but I would expect it to be in good condition. I would expect a refurbished device to last pretty close to a brand new device. So while I wouldn't expect a refurbished device to be in exactly the same condition as a brand new device, after all, theoretically you are paying less for it, I would expect that it was in very good condition, both cosmetically and functionally. So why do so many companies claim to refurbish devices but don't actually do it? Well, as far as I can tell, that all just comes down to profit. Now, there's no way to know for sure where most companies are getting the devices they use to refurbish, but most of them are getting them much cheaper than just the average person could buy them. I don't know what that price is, but I'm confident it's a lot less than you can get on, say, eBay. That being said, I am going to use eBay prices for this video example just because I know what those prices are. As of the filming of this video in May of 2023, I can go onto eBay and buy a used and working PlayStation 4 for between $100 and $150. So I'm gonna guess the average is about $125. Now when we go and look at companies who are selling PlayStation 4s, an acceptable condition PlayStation 4 that is refurbished from DK Oldies is $239. GameStop is $219. Best Buy is $269, and Back Market is $314. We're going to say that the PS4 that I'm refurbishing today, we can sell for $220. That's GameStop's refurbished PS4 price right now. Now, as far as I can tell, some companies just wipe off the outer shell of the device that they're selling and call that refurbished. If my buy price is $125 and the labor costs $5 to wipe off the outer shell, my sell price is $220, that leaves me with $90 profit. Now, if I actually refurbish this PS4 and my buy price is $125, if we're paying somebody $20 an hour for labor, and it takes about an hour to fully refurbish this, we're also going to run into more parts and supplies that we need because we're doing a much more thorough job. So I'm going to estimate parts and supplies at $20. If we sell it for $220, then our profit is only $55. That's a $35 price difference, which might not sound like much for one console, but if you're selling hundreds or thousands at this price, that's gonna be a significant amount of profit. I'm guessing the vast majority of people don't actually open up their refurbished device that they bought, so they don't actually know what the inside looks like, and moreover, they probably don't care, they're just glad that they got a better deal than brand new. That means that these companies can just call it refurbished and they get away with the fact that they don't actually refurbish it and they can pocket that $35 price difference. As a disclaimer, these are very rough estimates and I haven't included all of the different prices or possibilities of things that could be going on. For example, shipping prices, as well as different parts and supplies. And then any employees that you have, you have to pay taxes and various other costs associated with employing people. And we've got a very plugged heat sink right here. Wow, look at all this. So this is a great example if one of these companies would have gotten this PS4 
and just wiped out the outside and then sold it as refurbished, they would have sold it with all of this gunk caked up on the heat sink like that. There's just so much of this hair and debris lodged in this thing. So this one, if it was sold as refurbished, would have just overheated very, very quickly. Just so much dust inside this PS4. Let's check the other side. Usually that side's not bad. Yeah, that side's not too bad. I'm gonna clean this up a little more. And as you see, I do have a timer started because I wanna time and see how long it takes to fully refurbish this PS4. And this is, um, I've done a lot of these before, so I'm fairly quick at this. And I don't generally break stuff when I'm taking it apart or doing this work, you know? And if you have employees, some of that's gonna happen sometimes. So that's another cost you need that they would need to, to think about that in this type of business. Okay. I do need to vacuum all the loose stuff off, but that's pretty good. And now we're down to the fan and the disc drive on the other side. This fan definitely needs to be cleaned, so let's take that out first. And then with something this dirty especially, the disc drive rollers are probably gonna be very dirty. So if you're really doing a good job of refurbishing one of these, you need to clean those rollers too. Oh, and this fan, yeah, this fan is bad. Look, when I spin it, it doesn't really even spin versus a good fan, spin like that. So, need to replace the fan, which we will do. Need to clean that out. Let's check the disc drive and get those rollers cleaned. Just those three screws and then this bottom plate comes off. We can get to the rollers and yes, they are very dirty. The whole disc drive is dirty inside. So with that in mind, I'm gonna brush it out, blow it off with some canned air and then we'll clean the laser and these rollers right here.
There's like a piece of rice or something in here. That's disgusting. Okay, now rollers. And that's why I cleaned the rollers off. They were very dirty. If one of these companies would have just put this for sale as is without cleaning the rollers, they would have been super dirty and it would have taken in discs very slowly. This roller actually probably could be replaced. It's kind of chewed up right here. I am just going to use it anyway though. And we'll see what happens when we put it back together. It'll probably pull them in fine. It'll, it might, uh, it might pull part of it in a little slow, but usually when they're that, that amount of chewed up, it's not too big of a deal. So I'm not too worried about it. I think that will be within kind of like my definition of refurbished. I would expect, you know, a few little things to maybe not work like a brand new one, but Overall, I would say it would have to be in good condition and work well, not necessarily perfect. And again, this is just my opinion. Everybody's got their own opinion on what refurbished is. So the main thing to me is whether they are advertising the exact product that they're actually putting out. So if they say refurbished and they don't have a definition, that's a problem. If they say refurbished and they say they clean it and they don't clean it, that's a problem. Okay. Now the other thing with these is this part right here gets very dirty. That can also make your discs get dirty, so we're going to brush this off. My phone keeps going to sleep. We're at 14 minutes of refurbishing time so far. These clean off pretty easily though, and nicely. Just get a nice brush like I've got. Not like brand new, but a lot better than it was. Now we can put this back together and get it installed into the case, but first we need to clean the case. Just have these screws to put back on if you try and do this yourself, there's a little tab right here that slides under a black piece. So you need to make sure and do that correctly or else it's not gonna fit in the PS4 correctly. A Little bit more dust in here I'd like to get out. Okay, better. Not perfect but better. Okay, now time to clean that shell and then we'll be ready to start the reassembly. The shell itself isn't in horrible condition. It's definitely not the dirtiest I've seen, but man, there is quite a bit of dirt in here. Now, 
Now something like this, it would probably actually be easier just to soak it in water and I might actually do that because this dirt is really hard to get all the way off. There's always kind of like a dirt residue even when you clean it all off, so. Now that's really not too bad for a brushing out cleaning, but you know, if you're really gonna do a good job refurbishing this thing, I think we need to go ahead and get it wet and really brush it out really good. So I'm gonna leave my timer going while I do that and get it done. And then we gotta let this thing dry before we can put it back together. That's another thing that you got to think about with ref the refurbishing process. If people are, if these companies are doing a really good job, it's going to take a long time to actually refurbish these because in this example, I'm going to get this thing all wet, clean it out really good, and then it's got to dry fully before you can put it together. I mean, that's going to take minimum of an hour. Now obviously you can be doing other things while it's drying, but that is just a, a long process versus just coming in, wiping off the shell, making sure the shell looks clean and calling it good. So I think what I'll do is I'm just gonna get a damp paper towel instead of submerging the, the whole thing in water and we'll clean it off that way. And this is mostly just because then we don't have to wait for the whole thing to dry. So I think we'll get a good result without having all the time it takes to dry it. Not a great result, but definitely good. And in my opinion, acceptable. Okay, that is pretty good. I think that's gonna be good enough for us. It looks good, not perfect, but it looks pretty good. So let's get this disk drive in. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna clean up my desk area here so we don't have that dirt getting all over everything. Okay, not perfect, but all the loose dirt is gone. Let's put this disc, let's put this disc drive in.
clean up this cable a little bit. And clean up this cable a little bit. Okay, now the fan. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be installing a used fan, so we do need to give that a little bit of a brush out. This screw doesn't go here, it goes right where the arrow tells me to go. There we go. Okay, got a good clean fan. Now we need to clean off the bottom metal plate of all the dust and the thermal paste.
And now with that bottom plate cleaned, we can get that installed. There we go. Now with that installed, we've got the motherboard. We need to give this a good brushing off, and then of course we need to apply the perfect amount of thermal paste. There we go. Now that it's the perfect amount of thermal paste certified, TPTP certified, we can put it back into the case. Now we need to wipe off the top metal plate and we can install that.
Now this part right here is just kind of grimy. It doesn't just clean off with a brush. And if I'm getting something that is refurbished, I expect it to not be grimy. I don't always expect it to be like 100% clean, but grimy and nastiness just doesn't work. I'm going to put this on here to protect the board while we scrape on this a little bit. And even that's not perfect, but it is at least clean. Yeah, good way to break my phone screen. Then I'd be doing another repair video on how to fix a phone screen. Just kidding, I would not want to do that. Okay. Hard drive is much cleaner now. Not perfect, a little dirty over here. Once again, give that a good cleaning. Now time for the power supply. And to hook up all these connections down here. And once again, the power supply is also very dirty, so I'm going to give that a good brushing off, and then we'll install it. I'm not going to show all of this, but I will keep the timer going while I'm doing it. And here we go. Oh, forgot this one screw down here. I've done that a number of times before.
Now I have brushed out this bottom case, but I'm going to spend a little more time on this eject button right here because that's something that you touch all the time and you can see if it's dirty. And once you get it installed, once you get this case installed onto the PS4, it's kind of hard to get up in there with anything to clean it. Same with this whole kind of shelf right here. It's hard to clean once you have it all together. So we're just going to clean that now. Hopefully that will make it look nice and clean. Now we can install that part. There we go. Now we just have the top pieces to clean and then install. Again, I'll do this part off camera. I'm just going to be brushing this out and then we can test it and see if it even works after all of this. And now the top covers on the inside are clean. I'm going to clean this a little bit extra because it bugs me when I see dirt down in here. Wait a second. Can't put that on yet. What am I even doing? Should probably go ahead and install the screws first. Now we can put the rest of the shell on. Now with that all done, we can clean up the case, the outer shell, and then we can start it up and test it. But I do need to install the screws that go back here first. Okay. Now I'm going to use a little bit of spray away glass cleaner. I, I used to use isopropyl alcohol for cleaning these cases, but that actually kind of like dries it out a little bit. So now I use this instead.
I still need to fully test this system, test all the features, make sure there's nothing else that's wrong. And we're already at 48 minutes. That's gonna take a minimum of 10 to 20 minutes. So we're probably gonna be over an hour on this refurbished system. So you tell me in the comments, number one, what you think refurbished means, and number two, how much you would pay for a system like this. One of the main problems is after spending all this time on this PS4, it's really just not worth any more than probably about $220. And you can get a used system on eBay or probably Facebook Marketplace for a lot cheaper than that. So ultimately it's very difficult for companies that sell refurbished consoles to really make money at it unless they cut corners. I don't think it's right that they cut corners, but ultimately that's just how it is and why they do it. Now let's get this thing started up and see if it'll work. And here we go. We do have power, we've got a blue light. It just does PlayStation 5 here because that's the last thing I hooked up to the TV. It's not recognizing this as a PS5 or anything. While it's restarting, I'm gonna grab a disc. And let's see how well this thing pulls discs in. While that's doing the system check, let's check the disc drive. Okay, not too bad at all. Yeah, not the best, but that definitely, I think that definitely works for a refurbished console. I do want to put it in one more time to make sure it spins up. Ooh, that was a little rougher. Yep, so the disk drive is spinning the disk up and it's working fine. Okay, and this PS4 is working great. We're at 50 minutes. There's at a minimum 10 minutes more of testing that needs to be done on this. So I think an hour might even be not quite enough time to do a full refurbishment on a PS4, assuming it's in the condition that this one was in. If you wanna know the best places to find a refurbished game console, I'm gonna put my refurbished review playlist up on your screen now so you can go check it out and see which companies provide the best refurbished game consoles. If you wanna check out our new merch, go to tronicsfix.com. Thanks so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.